1102. We're right about on time. Yeah, we're right about on time. Must be just the camera. There we go. How's <laughs> that? Is that lighting okay? Um, it's a little. It's a little washed out. Okay. I'm afraid the colors and stuff are not going to show well. Just that you talk to the people. Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's been a while. <laughs> we were just saying. Um, How's that? Uh, let's see. A little bit better. Go up oh. with it a little bit higher. I think that's what it's doing. Sorry. We were just saying it's been a while since we've talked to you. So welcome. This is episode number 14 of It Is So Not A Podcast. I'm Debbie. I own the shop just outside of Richmond called Dances With Wool in Midlothian. And we have a lot to share with you today. Erin's just adjusting lights. That's much better. Thank you. Erin's yeah. adjusting lights. And so we're going to be right with you. We are your local yarn store, whether you are local to us or whether you are not. We have a robust website. We are a yarn shop that offers quality yarns and accessories for knitters, crocheters, and knitters and weavers as <laughs> now, well. Spinners and weavers. We have ventured into a, a new uh, section of our store. So we're going to be offering uh, spinning and weaving supplies, equipment as well. And, um, and accessories, and yarn, and fiber. So, um, yeah, so we'll be having lots to tell you about that in the days ahead. We are a welcoming environment here. We are here for you Tuesday through Saturday from 9 to 5. For, uh, 11 to 5. Excuse me, from 11 to 5. <laughs> we, well, I mean, wow. we feel like we're working 9 to 5. Do we feel dolly in we're our We're pretty hearts, much here by that time. But, <laughs> but we're not open until <laughs> Sorry long. about that. You think I've been <laughs> given the spiel long enough. I would know that. 11 to 5. But, you know, we're here to help you with any projects that you're doing. We also are a com community place where we welcome you to come in, sit, just veg with us for a while, work on your projects, and we are an inclusive environment as well. So we welcome everyone. Yep. So thank and you. Like Debbie said, if you're not local, my mm -hmm. name is Erin. I'm the store manager. And if you're not local, we have a website. Most of what's in the store is available on the website. And you can shop it 24 hours a day from your couch in your pajamas. Uh, we offer flat rate shipping across the country. And we also have, of course, a robust social media presence. You can find us on Instagram, on Facebook, or Dances with Wool RVA. Obviously, you're watching us here on yeah. our YouTube channel. Um, we deal, do, deal, yeah, do still offer virtual uh, shopping we're appointments. We get used to doing this. I know. It's going. like we miss a month and I don't even know how to talk we, anymore. Yeah, we're struggling um, here. <laughs> but we do still offer virtual shopping appointments. So you can still book those on our website. If you are not local, but you would like some help picking out yarn for a project, we are happy to do that for you. Yeah, yeah. So we're so glad we're back with you today. Yes. We've got lots to tell you about. We've got some exciting news to share with you. We've got some yarn crawl news to share with you. And we've got some whips and some um, FOs to share with and you And lots today. of new stuff in the store. Yeah. So if you don't have one yet, good morning, Sandy. If you don't have a cup of coffee or something, you may want to go grab one right. real quick because this we're is going to be, be a long episode. Oh, yeah. So first so, of all, yeah. So what are you wearing today? <laughs> You have seen this so much. I know you're tired of it. No, um, it's it adorable. Is, I love it. Yes, it is the Midori Pullover. This is by You Knit Toronto. I actually got it in um, or bought the pattern and um, the yarn in Rhinebeck when we were back in October. Look at you, we a Rhinebeck FO. That's pretty I good. A Rhinebeck FO. But um, this is Harrisville Daylights. So this in this yarn is 85% Cormo and 15% other wool. Now, I got to tell you, this, for even 70 degree weather, it is the lightest sweater. It is not at all heavy. It's wool and spun yarn. That's yeah. Why. And it is also, I have worn this sweater so much lately. It doesn't pill, um, you know, a, well, very minimal pilling yeah. going on, but it's just been wonderful. And my favorite feature of it is instead of just a rib here, they incorporated this texture pattern. It's just a very, it's this texture right here mm -hmm. that they've incorporated right into the, um, to the cuffs. I love it. It's just the perfect size. It is, I did it cropped. You can do it longer because it is top down. Um, but I chose to do it cropped because I have some linen, um, jumpers that I have been wearing it over and, you know, I just absolutely positively love it. I know. It's so great. I highly recommend the pattern. We, and I've got to say this, do not carry Harrisville 
yarns. Yarns in the store. And that's the case. We, Erin and I both, we say all the time, we're, we're huge knitters and we would limit ourselves if we only bought yarn that we carry here. Mm -hmm. We love fiber. And we, when we go to these festivals and things, we tend to come home with just as much as anybody else, even though we have so much yarn in the store. Well, we can't carry everything, no, right? No, And so I love, I have really gotten this last year to the point where, and maybe even a little bit longer, I love rustic yarns. I really you enjoy. You know, that love you yarn would yeah, be nice. It would pattern. be beautiful with this. We have we'll something we can that. show you that would be very nice. Good morning, Brenda. Yeah, yeah. So I, anyway, I have just loved it. It's very lightweight. I enjoyed every moment of this project. It was very um, easy mm -hmm. as far as, you know, uh, just a little bit of detail on the yoke and the rest of it was just knitting around. So. A very nice, nice, nice knit. Very well written. Yeah. So highly recommend this one. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's fun. Yeah. So I actually have finished objects, guys. This is what happens when <laughs> A, we don't have a podcast for a month. Yeah. And B, I've been sick as a dog for most of the month that we've been gone. So I actually had knitting time and I actually have finished objects. But this is the goat cow by Laura Dobratz. You might have seen this in the shop because it's been hanging up as a sample which tends to happen sometimes to RFOs, but that's okay. So I just rip them off yeah, the body. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, Karen yeah. did tell me she made sure she wore a shirt under she that did. sweater the she other did. day that she, she came in with it. I literally took it from her. But this is the Goat Cow by Laura Dobratz. You've seen this in the shop. We've had kits from Emma's. I finally finished mine. It's really fun. Mine's a little bit longer, I think, than the pattern calls for because I was determined to use all of the yarn in the kit. But it's fingering weight yarn held double. Good morning, Joyce. Hi, Joyce. And it's just a lot of fun to knit. It really was. I enjoyed it. You know, the only reason why it took me so long was because I just have so much going on right now that I don't get as much knitting time yeah. as I would like. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love it. And we still have, we, we don't have, have some, but we don't have this. I know here. we don't have this kit anymore, but we do have some kit choices um, available in the shop. So that's the goat cowl. And we'll probably put in one more <coughs> order before the crawl. Before the yarn crawl, which we'll talk about the yarn crawl yeah, so. later on. But yeah, we've had a lot of really great feedback. I really love this. this. I haven't had a chance to wear it, but it's really nice. It, mm -hmm. it feels good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> nice and soft. Yep. Yeah. So, so, so do you have anything else? finished to show I us? do not. Okay. Nothing else finished. I have some things. See, on. we flip flopped for this episode because <laughs> I have a bunch of stuff to show you. So um, if you are doing the year long knit along with us, we are going down the brioche path. And right now everybody is working on their vintage prim hats by Andrea Mowry. But of course mine is done. It's mostly done. I still need to film my videos about weaving in ends and blocking. So it's not a hundred percent done, but there it is. There's the brio. You don't have to be participating in the cow to do this fun to pattern. Do, no, it's just, this is a great pattern. If you are just beginning to learn brioche, there are increases and decreases that create this patterning, but they're not hard. There's lots of great video tutorials out there um, to help you. And Andrea suggests some in the pattern. But the nice thing is the other side of the hat, guys, is garter stitch in the round. So you're just knitting across with one color, purling across with the other. So that's why I picked this particular pattern for the knit-along. But uh, so if you're a knit-along participant watching, I'm going to film this week videos about weaving in ends. We're going to learn how to weave in ends in brioche. And I'm going to show you how to block my favorite hat blocking methods. But the knitting part is done on my vintage prim so hat. Pretty. I really love this. Yeah. It's a great effect. Yeah. With the brioche. And because Two it's colors. brioche and garter stitch in the round, it's completely reversible. So you can turn it inside out and wear it the other way. So you're going to get a lot of wear That's out of that. That's the cool thing about brioche. This winter. Yep. <coughs> yes. It's a nice hat. It's a nice weight. So I've got that done. And then the other thing I've been doing a lot. Look at this. Of is spinning. You have got to hold this up so yeah. they can truly see. So I have a bunch of finished skeins. I have a couple, the littler ones. These two were from small bats that I purchased um, from Melanated Boho Bay. This is some fiber that came from the shop. So this is some Kim Dye's yarn, um, Merino silk, or the BFL silk fiber. This is a finished skein that I'm working on. So I've been doing a lot of spinning yeah. lately. Um, 
we do have spinning classes. So if you have missed, yours is going to turn out just fine, Joyce. If you, <laughs> I see that comment. If you have missed our, we've done two rounds. I'm going to do, starting my second round of beginning spinning classes mm -hmm. this uh, this evening. evening. We know that we have a wait list for classes. We know the spinning and weaving classes. We've been trying to get as many mm -hmm. of them as they can, but there's we're limited in the terms of seats that we can have in these classes. But another beginning spinning class is coming in August. We'll talk about our summer classes here in a little bit later on in the podcast. But if you would like to learn how to spin, and if you are a spinner, we charge dealership for Shat Spindle Co. now. So we can order. Mm -hmm. We have one floor model spinning wheel. The next one should be coming, I think, either end of this week or end of next week. Um, so we have equipment you can come in and try out. We can order uh, any of the wheels for you that Shat mm -hmm. carries, and they'll be drop shipped straight to you. But and we have a lot of things coming with spinning and weaving. As we said, we just added that component to our shop and our offerings here, including, but we have this educational component too that's quite separate from the retail space. And so that's a piece we're actually working on right now. Yes. So you're going to see things popping up mm -hmm. on our website um, from now for a couple of months, probably, as we iron out exactly how we are going to do this. We've actually hired another weaving teacher to take care of some of this demand that we have mm -hmm. for the weaving yeah. classes. Erin um, was working Friday on trying to just kind of structure how we're going to do the spinning. Mm -hmm. And so we, we're working on it. Yeah. So just be patient because we've got a lot of things coming up and that's just one thing that we're working on right now. But you will see things popping up on the website. Yeah. And if you're weeks. interested in spinning fun braids with color. I do have a spinning with color class. So if you already know how to spin and you're looking for kind of next That'll step, be fun. Yeah. that's coming. That's up in the summer too. So like I said, we'll talk about the summer classes here in a little bit. Yeah. But that's what I have done. So I actually have things finished. It's really amazing. And I'm almost done with something else too. So I've been quite pleased with myself yeah. here lately. Gosh. Wow. You have been busy. I know. Well, <laughs> that's what happens when you're home sick for like two weeks and can't do anything else. I know. And yeah. And that with, and part of that was COVID. So you had to be quarantined. I literally, yes. You I couldn't was go anywhere. Literally so. trapped in my house for two weeks. So <laughs> yeah. Just your dog. So, yeah. And, and my dogs, spinning wheel. And your spinning wheel. Oh. So um, I've got three um, whips. Yeah that I'll show you. And there is a method to this madness. I did have some cast on itis at the beginning of the year. However, I have, and I'll tell you exactly my method for this. Um, this is, uh, the first one is Calliope or Calliope. I've been corrected on both. So I don't know exactly. Um, I think it's Calliope. I but think it's Calliope me. too, but I've been told it's Calliope, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, this is an Espos Trico pattern. Um, so it's Which free. Means it's free. Yeah, it's free. I started this like in January. And the reason that it's not so much um, yet done with it, it's such a pretty color, too. I'm so loving this color. This is just a mohair and fingering hell double. I feel like it's washing out on the camera, but that's it okay. It is. Yeah, no. But um, what I get to the sleeve divide and then I just put it away. Um, so right now it's just something I bring out if I'm doing um, knit night in the shop or uh, just going to a social event like we had yesterday, I'll bring it out and take it with me because it's just knitting in the round at this point. So once I did the work up to that, this became my conversational knitting piece. So I just kind of put it away and bring it out like when I'm, you know, in a social knitting place. But like I said, this is fingering and um and uh no, mohair no. held double and i did um more of a matchy matchy combination mm -hmm. than uh you know a right. little bit Rather of than a, a difference yeah mm -hmm. so that um has been fun and i had that at fine creek yesterday we had an event out there and i was working on it out there and it's just a nice one now that i'm past the sleeves because it's nine inches of knitting in the round for the <laughs> underarm mm -hmm. then the next one that I'm doing, you're going to see a um, kind of a theme here. This is seal. It's uh, spelled S-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, but it's pronounced, fortunately, she did a pronunciation with the pattern. Yeah. It is called seal. 
This is by Petite Knit. It and is the we best. will link all the patterns yeah. um, that we talk about. Everything will be linked in the description box once this video is no longer live. Right. You'll be able to go right down to the description box below the video and find links to everything. Sandy was asking what yarn for your calliope. Um, it is a fingering superwash. I got this at 29 Bridges Trunk Show. Yeah. But any fingering superwash will do. Mm -hmm. With the yeah. mohair silk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I got that at 29 Bridges. Mm -hmm. for, with a when I had the trunk Bridget. show back in yes. February. I am, um, I get caught up in uh, all those beautiful yarns oh, from I trunk shows. when they come in from trunk shows. Yes. I, I have know. to studiously ignore trunk shows. So. Did you bring your, yes, your project? Oh, here it is. <laughs> I was like, what did I do? So we were it? talking about the seal slipover. This is a seal slipover. So this is what I have done right now. You start on the back and I'm now on the increases for the arm. So I'm on the increases for, you know, I've mm -hmm. done through the arm and I'm on mm -hmm. this, these increases mm -hmm. that are getting out. So it's just a really pretty, pretty um, texture. Texture. Oh, yeah, you can see the texture. Let me put it this way because this is the top. So it's top down. So you'll see that mm -hmm. I am working on those increases yep. now. But yeah, it's it's very meditative. I mean, like I said, it's in a you get to the point where you finish the chart and then there's like an 11 row repeat for the rest of it. Um, mm -hmm. that you're just repeating the pattern over and over mm -hmm. and over Knits again. Knits and pearls. Knits pearls create the pattern. And then <laughs> um, yeah, and then after this, the the front is basically more because it is a little bit bigger because that's where you're going to be doing right. the seaming. And then mm -hmm. it has the um, the shoulders yep. from the front piece. Yeah. So, so that is it DK weight yarn? DK weight yarn. I am using True Wash DK. Right. We're from Little Fox Yarns, which, which we will are getting. eventually be in the shop. Um, it's not here right now. Mm -hmm. Amy's having some supply issues with her mill on her yeah. true wash base. This was a pad. I bought the yarn actually for another project mm -hmm. and then just decided, changed my mind and decided I wanted mm -hmm. it for this project instead. Um, this is one that I work on mostly right now. So this is kind of uh, the one Your that primary. I'm primary primary because I am also working on, if you remember from the last podcast, I told you I was doing out of the cherish book from Marie Wallen. I was doing this Aisling. That's on the cover. That's on the cover. Um, it is Fair Isle. It was my project for the year. I was going to work on it just a few rows at a time. I I bought the kit, the British Breeds kit mm -hmm. from Wooly Thistle to do this. And I will tell you, Marie Wallen was great to work with because I bought the book, but the charts are so tiny in the book, and I I typically use Knit Companion. So I wrote her and asked if I could possibly get a copy of the chart, a PDF copy of the chart to, to bring in to my knit companion. And she did the PDF of the whole yeah. book for me. Mm -hmm. So I've got um, access to this on the whole book on knit companion now. So she's really awesome to work with, but yes. So this is, one that in the rotation of the three works in progress. Oh, wow. You've made a lot of progress, <laughs> though, Debbie. I know. This is wow. one that I do just a few rows a night. This wow. is bottom up. Look at that. That is so yeah. pretty. I think it's going to be so nice. Oh, um, and it feels so nice. And yeah. This is before you block it. This is going to bloom really pretty. Yeah. When you I think so, it. too. But um, this is, yeah, from bottom up. I am almost, believe it or not... She has you, I think I have a, about 10 rows on the chart left. Mm -hmm. And then she has you put this down. Okay. And then you and do, do the sleeves. The sleeves mm -hmm. and, um, and then attach everything yeah, together. Yeah. And then you're going to be mm -hmm. attaching that and then finishing up mm -hmm. the... Yep. It's a technique I haven't really used yeah. before. Mm -hmm. That's pretty standard for a round yoke bottom up instead of top down. Yeah. So anyway, this is almost done. And then I have to do the sleeves and then put it together and finish it up. Yeah. So... Yeah. Wow, but... you've really made a lot of pride. Well, I remember when you were doing this rib yeah, uh, on like never... the size two needles and you thought you were uh, going to like stab yourself uh, in the well, eye. Thank you, y'all. Y'all are sweet. Yeah. Um, so yes. It is beautiful. I love it. So what I really like, I I've only been doing like three or four rows a night. But so in my rotation, when I sit down and get ready to <coughs> watch TV at night, I'll do two, three, four rows of this, put it aside, and then I'll work on seal. 
And then, like I said, I'm not really doing the other one right I'm now. I'm not sure. It, unless yeah, I'm at an event. Public. So, because you really don't need it until. <coughs> so that's how I manage three whips at a time. <laughs> I, you know, I'm a big, you know me. I'm, I well, know. first of all, I'm a big advocate of like, I just work what I, what I want to work on. And I toss stuff aside and I yeah, cast on. I and there is no method to my madness. <laughs> but yeah. So you've at least got yourself organized. I do. I, I feel like I yeah. do anyway. Yeah. I, yeah. So anyway, so um, what are you working on? So I thought really truly that I was going to be done with this. And then I got a little stalled out this weekend and didn't quite finish it. But so pretty. I have a leather love note. So, light. So, so love light. note by Tin Can Knits. You've seen this pattern. It's everywhere. I made my first one this fall and then red. decided that mm -hmm. I was totally going to make another one. And I may even make another. I mean, this is such a nice adaptable pattern. I am using a slub yarn held together with a mohair silk lace weight. This is Chelsea Yarns Duets. And I did the trick that Nikki did where I wound, because a duet is one skein of mohair and one skein of slub twisted together. Uh, but you take them apart and they're two separate skeins. But I wound them separately and then I wound them together uh. into one cake. So I'm not trying to pull yarn from two places this is so much easier you all it is Pro tip. so <laughs> much easier it's easier to alternate skeins because yeah. i had you know two duets oh, so i had yeah, four skeins of yarn i don't have four skeins of yarn this attached. is what happens when you alternate four skeins of yarn and together. they're it's, yeah mm -hmm. yeah this is what happens so much easier, easier. wind yeah. each cake separately and then put them together and you know put them in a bowl or something and wind the two what a great two, yeah. idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. This is gorgeous. So this is I love it in the slug. her leopard love... colorway. Yeah. And Chelsea Lux Yarns is coming back mm -hmm. for a trunk yarn show crawl. during Yarn Crawl, you guys. So I'm almost done. I'm on the second sleeve. I mean, I'll be done with this in another couple of days. So. You are going to so love wearing that. I love, I I love, love the it. slub. I know. Isn't the slub fun? In this pattern, yes, with the mohair, and so and you is, can still see yeah. what I love about mm -hmm. it is you can still, still see, see the, the lace. lace, and it's once it's blocked, you'll really see it. So, um, I'm not because I can't leave patterns alone, and I hate provisional cast ons, so I just modified it. I just cast, I made the neckline a little bit wider on this one because my first one, the neckline is just a little high, so I just cast on uh, and did ribbing and reverse engineered the decreases as increases instead um but i have notes in my ravelry project page about how i do that because mm -hmm. i can't be i hate original cast ons i can't be bothered this is one of those patterns i i i'm like you i barely i rarely do a pattern mm -hmm. twice but this one i've done twice yeah and i can see and myself doing just, it mm -hmm. again it's such a great <laughs> pattern so you use the patterns written for a fingering held together with mohair you use like size nine or 10 needles. Mm -hmm. It goes fast. It goes fast. You could do it in DK if you didn't want to hold two yarns together. There's just a lot that you can do with this pattern. And it looks different. Different yarns. Like this looks totally different than my other one that I did um, with just a regular superwash merino mm -hmm. fingering and mohair. So almost done with that. Um, my gnome. I did not get a gnome done for March. Sadly, I was sick. Um but my next <laughs> gnome is underway. Y'all, I'm so excited about this. So I'm following the never not gnoming pattern. But instead, can you wind, wind the, the two, two yarns, yarns together? together? Shot. Yes, we can do that for you. That is absolutely something that we can we can help you out with. But instead of using fingering weight yarn <laughs> and tiny so needles, cool. <laughs> I'm knitting it out of super bulky. So I'm knitting it out of Rasta. This blue, this was a whole skein of Rasta wow. in the blue. And then his little body, which is, this is his hat. And his little body, I've just started here, will be an entire skein of Rasta for the body. And then I have some, uh, like that chenille, super bulky stuff that you can buy at the big box craft store. That's what his beard's going to be. So that his beard will be <laughs> white and fluffy. <laughs> oh, so gosh. he's going to be, he's probably going to stand about, maybe two and a half feet tall when I'm done with him. I did a little bit of extra bit of on the hat. I'm going to stick a pipe cleaner in here. So it'll curl. I'm so excited about this. That is adorable. It is so cute. So we'll be swiping that from her. 
to put to, in to put in the shop. <laughs> I can't keep anything. I know, I, I know. So <laughs> that'll be my April no. So I got slightly off track. I didn't do one for March, but that'll be my April. And then I have one more. So while I was sick, I needed something like in garter stitch that I just didn't have to necessarily pay too much attention to. So I started a northeasterly by Skananigans. This is a blanket pattern technically, but there's actually, she gives you a lot of different size options. But this is a really cool modular pattern. You start with a strip and it's chevron. So you're working, um, you know, an increase on each side, decrease or in, uh, decrease on each side, increase in the middle. But once you have your first foundational strip done, then you start working on your next strip and you join it as you go. So this is a fabulous pattern for mini skeins or leftovers. I am doing mine out of all the mini skeins that I got in my National Parks New Year countdown calendar back in December. If you watched our Vlogmas videos, I opened the little mini skeins every day. And now this is what I'm going to put them in. So mine won't be a blanket. It'll probably be a wrap, like a big wrap-like mm -hmm. shawl when I'm done. So this is now my kind of year-long project pick up and go. But this is such a neat concept because you only are ever working on like, this is like 30 stitches. And the pattern is written for either fingering or DK weight. So she gives you, she gives you two sets of instructions depending on what weight of yarn you want to use. But if you've got leftover bits, you know, from projects or um, mini skeins and things, and there's lots of, of course, you know, mini or scrap blankets out there. This one I think is just cool because you're only ever knitting on a little bit at a time, mm -hmm. um, but they're not mitered squares. So it's just a different, it's just a different look. So that's mine. So these are my three Yosemite colors. Mm, that's pretty. And now I saw the idea. Grand Canyon colors. Just, even if you're working with just scraps of yarn. Yeah. Or, um, leftover bits leftover from bits projects. And because, I mean, you can see like in the picture on the pattern, you know, she's got these much shorter little sections. And she gives you instructions on like if you start a column and then you can put it on provisional, like uh, put it on waste yarn. And she gives you a really neat tip about how to do that without a um, darning needle. And so you can hold the stitches and work on different columns. And you can add bits in different places based on what color. Because that's a big thing to me with scrap blankets. Because <coughs> I always think they're neat. But then, like, the mm -hmm. colors don't. You're like, ooh, I don't want to put this color here because I don't. Yeah. This gives you an option. You can have four or five columns technically going at once. And so you can put oh, your scraps oh, yeah. Wherever different colors based on how where you want to what put them. What a great them. pattern. Yeah, it's called Northeasterly by Skein and Against, and there is a crochet version too. Wow. So yeah. Yeah. So get out your stash. So get out your stash. <laughs> get out all those leftover bits that you don't know what to do pieces. with. Yeah. And or those mini skeins that you like to buy, and then you're like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. And yeah. That's an option. Yeah. All right. So what are you doing next? Well, I have more filming to do for the knit along. Like I said, the hat videos are almost done, and now I'm gonna start working. I have started on my broadleaf sweater already. Uh, how's um, that going? It's good. It's, it's going good. good. But I will start filming those videos, and I am prepping for Maryland sheep and wool, <laughs> getting all yeah. my all my skin and garment <clears throat> entries ready, and all that kind of stuff. I have a lot of prep work. To do so you are entering some what are you entering um i'll be entering i know i'm going to put my row oh. in because it's anything that you finished since the last in-person festival which is in 2019 so that's a lot to pull from in terms of backlog of work but i know i'm going to put row in i'll put some spinning in i'm not sure what else yet i haven't completely decided so that's part of what i am working on so we are not chartering a bus to Maryland Sheep and Wool no, this, year. this year. Yeah. We're hoping next year um, everything will be in a better place and we'll be able to take a bus up. But um, I would encourage you to, if you're going to be up at Maryland Sheep and Wool 
I think we're going to try to do a meetup each afternoon on Saturday and on Sunday. Erin's going to mm -hmm. probably hold the meet. We'll, we'll figure it we're out. We're going to figure it out. I mean, more details for But she'll be up there Saturday. I'll be up there yeah. Sunday. We'll do a meetup. We'll have a, a couple yeah. of giveaways. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll have a picture. And, yeah, yeah. So if you're going on your own, keep an eye out Show for and that. <laughs> and if you're not going, um, or even if you are, but you are would like to watch our adventures, there will be a travel mm -hmm. vlog that we're going to put up on the uh, yeah. YouTube channel. So if you don't subscribe, now is a good time to hit that subscribe button. And there's a little bell next to the subscribe button. You can tap that and it mm -hmm. will send you a notification anytime a new video goes up. Yeah. So that would be a good way not to miss anything. I'm going to be there for like a week almost. Um, cause and I'm taking I, yeah, I'm class going and she's going I'm early going too. Early. Gabby's going to gonna learn take, to spin. she's going to learn how to <laughs> spin. I'm taking a few classes and yeah. I do a lot of volunteering with the fleece sale. So I actually got my email with my assignments this morning. Oh, okay. So yeah, that'll oh, be great. good. So that's what's coming. Yeah. That's, that's just around the corner too. It is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I leave in like <laughs> three and a half weeks and I'm not ready. So no. we got a lot to do between now and then. All right, so we've got quite a bit to oh show my you. Gosh. I mean, um, you can see a pile here, but there's like piles all over the table in front of us, guys. Well, the first thing we've got, uh, we've got, we um, subscribe here to the Emma's Yarn <coughs> Color of the Month. Um, we have got, I'm not sure if we can show this one yet, can we? Yeah, it's okay. it, we're well okay. into April now. Okay. All right, so this one is April's. Um, what do we love about these Hella Hanks? And this is, you know, the Hella Hanks from Emma's. They have um, 600 yards. So if you're looking for shawls, this is, you could probably do easily a nice wearable shawl with one skein of mm -hmm. yarn. And um, so it's very nice. This one is April 22. So 2022, it's very beautiful. That I think for color, some reason, the coloring is on better on my side of the screen. And yeah, I don't know why. I don't know either. But and, yeah, um, it's got, a really pretty yeah. dusty pink color. And then they always do some Pairing coordinating it. colors. Yeah, Winds of so Change. So this is Winds of Change. So that's pretty yeah. with it. And we've got other colors on the wall that would yeah. also go well with it. Oh, yeah. This one is Bare Necessities. And, and this one is Beach, Beach Please. Please. So. so these were the four. Probably move them closer mm -hmm. there. Oh, there we go. There we go. They so these were the better. four that we got in. Or I can show you. I really like bare necessities. I do too. But that soft speckling. So these were the four that we got in for April. But we have more um, other months, other right. colors. So Hella Hakes are great for, like Debbie said, one will do a good size shawl, but multiples will do a, I mean, great thing for sweater because there's 600 yards in a skein. So that would be fewer ends to weave in because two, yeah. you know, two skeins would do a short that. sleeve sweater for I you. Know, who doesn't love less? Right. <laughs> All right. And then we are restocked. You want to hold that? Yeah. We are restocked on Barker Wool. So this is a name change. Um, you may formally have chasing. formally chasing rabbits, now Barker Wool. But these are some of her assigned pooling skeins. So if you're unfamiliar, the idea is the majority of the skein is dyed one color, and then there's like an accent color. Mm -hmm. And Dawn has written a whole series. There's lots of patterns now. This is including calico, a sweater. Uh, including a sweater, but this is calico. This I just pulled this. This is the sample we have to show you. The idea is you knit kind of a background stitch like stockinette, and then when you get to the blip of accent color, you do a different special stitch to highlight it. So it's a really cool concept. Um, every time we get these in, we sell out. We have it this time on her. This is the colorway that's in the yeah. shawl. It's called Wild Violets. Which we can't keep in. <laughs> which we can't keep in stock. But this is so this time we got it on her silky solo base, which is beautiful. Um, it is a 75% superwash merino, 25% silk um, single ply fingering weight base. But we've got lots of fun, beautiful colors. I love this. New colors we've never had in before. And this one may be going home with me. Yeah. So lots <laughs> of great, oh. fun options from Barker Wool. What's so fun about it, too, is you get pooling. this randomness. Yes. It. So there's you have to be okay with random. You do. <laughs> you have to be okay. But there's so much. And like I said, there's lots of different. Dawn has got a ton of different 
patterns now. Mm -hmm. She's got a sweater. She's got different shawls with different stitch patterns. Some of them take two skeins, some take three. Um, the sweater's actually striped with like a semi-solid colorway. So you use a couple of skeins of the side pooling, and then you get like a, a contrasting, um, mm -hmm. a contrasting semi-solid colorway, and you stripe it. Lots of great. We'll um, link all of Dawn's patterns under it. I'll give a link just to her, all of her designs on Ravelry. So you can take a look at what to do yeah. with the assigned. And she also yarn. does some great support on YouTube yes. for her different patterns. Yes. So to show you how to mm -hmm. do the stitches. So, so she actually shows you. So those are, you know, if you're like me and you mm -hmm. want to see them multiple times yeah. because you can't remember the first time sometimes. Yes. Yes. That's a, you know, <coughs> she, she does great um, pattern support. Yeah. So it's going to be fun. Do you want to talk about that yeah. Next. So um, we are partnering right now with Love You Farm out of Montpelier, Virginia. Betsy McPherson Ooh, is the Betsy. shepherdess out there. And um, she has this beautiful, um, just these beautiful Romney sheep out mm -hmm. there. And she takes such great care of them. I'm just so, I don't know. You go out there and you just feel happy. You feel good. Her sheep are happy. She's happy. <laughs> it's just, just, it's just it's wonderful. It's a big secret, guys. Most shepherds yeah. take good care of their yeah. sheep. I promise. And so we <laughs> have got these undyed. Um, yes. Yeah, so these skeins. are all natural. So Romney sheep, uh, which are a breed of sheep, come in lots of different colors. And so we have these three undyed colors of the wool. And on the skein, she is going to tell you the sheep whose fleece went into the blend. It's multiple Sometimes sheep. multiple names. And the reason is when they go to the mill. Right. They, they mix the same. Some. So like if she's got two gray sheep, then their two fleeces get mixed together to make mm -hmm. the wool. So this is Olive and Maisie. But that's kind of neat that the sheep whose wool went into your yarn, you there it's on the label. Yeah. You can learn their names. So I just I went out there last weekend and of course... I was holding babies that were two weeks old. Yeah. yeah. And you can, you can, yeah. you can look up Love You Farm make online, an make an appointment and you can go out and see Betsy Sheep. Montpelier is only about an hour away from here, but this is Robney wool. Um, it's worsted weight, but it's kind of a light worsted. So I think you could get like a DK weight yeah. gauge with it. Um, 200 yards per skein. And it does retail here for $30. And it blooms so beautifully. Oh, yes. So as you can see in this, and we have this, this Just sample. This sample. It is the um, color quadrant crop, um, and we've done it now. We've did it with the three colors that mm -hmm. Aaron was just holding up for you. For this pattern, I believe it's the gray, or is it the brown? It's the gray that it took two skeins of the gray. Mm -hmm. It didn't quite make it in one, mm -hmm. and then one skein of the brown. And one skein yeah. of the cream. But, but there's lots of different yeah. things you can. We just did this we mostly did this. so you could see how the different colors. And yeah. how it blocks. And how it blocks. And how it felt down yeah. here. It's just one one big swatch. <laughs> yeah, basically. But um, just a beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. um. So wool. it's it's really nice. Now it's not merino wool, guys. So it's not going to be like yeah. baby's left butt cheek soft. But mm -hmm. it is. It's not scratchy. It's it has a really nice hand and feel to it. It blooms up beautifully. And yeah. the thing about Romney wool, this is not going to pill no. if you put this in a sweater. And you know what? You look at the stitch. You can't really see oh, it. Oh, beautiful on stitch the, definition. The this stitch would be great for cables yeah. or anything like that. So, you know, yeah. Anyway. Try a different breed of sheep. And the whole world is not made out of merino. We sold a as much sweater. as I love about merino. <laughs> I know we sold a sweater quantity the other yes, day. Yes, this, this we're almost out of. We only have a few skeins. Yeah, left. We're, we'll get more. We'll but, get more. Um, but uh, Betsy wrote me this cute little email and said she had reached out the lady had reached out because she wanted to know more about the sheep. And Betsy was so excited to hear yeah. from her and give her more information. So yeah, so we're excited. Lots this is fun. a local partner. Yeah. Um, and it, it's just, it feels good to it's be really able nice. to feature yeah. someone else's yeah. um, local yarn uh, in the shop. So, yeah, so that's good. And then this is the last, I think, of the yarn to discuss. The Illumini? Yes. Yes. Pretty. Um, so this, now let's switch gears completely yeah. to non-wool yarn. This is cotton. And, and alpaca. alpaca. And so it's got this lovely drape to it. We had this in the store last year and it was very well received. Yes. So we wanted to bring it back. It is a good, we, we've already said it would make a beautiful ranunculus. It, in fact, we're going to get that done with this yarn mm -hmm. for a shop sample. It would be a gorgeous, um, 
you know, you could, uh, oh gosh, what's the one? The one that, um, oh shoot, I just <laughs> just dropped the name. I'll think about it. But let me tell you a little bit about the Oh, the Quesa? The Quesa tea. Quesa tea. Yep, that's what I was thinking about it. We've got a sample of that in the Um, shop, but not out of this. So what this is, um, we've got two colors here that are, you know, just these two grays over here. This light gray and this little bit of medium gray here. And then what this one does. These two are marl. So it's one strand of one colorway, one strand of another colorway twisted together. Which is just very interesting. Yeah, case of tea. That's and it really does feel very, very nice. I'm not a big fan of plant-based yarns myself, but this feels very, very nice. Yeah, well, it's, it's got, got a little, little bit, bit of alpaca, alpaca in it. Mm-hmm. So, so it's going to have a nice yeah. drape. Yeah. So this is a good warm weather yarn. Mm-hmm. And we'll be carrying that um, through the win- through the summer. Yep. And so, yeah, so come in and check it out. We'll, like I said, we're getting a sample made up in that. So you'll be able to feel it and see so. how it knits up and crochets up. Yeah. Very so, nice. All right. Two magazine. Or oh, do actually, you want me to talk about this first? Oh, gosh, yes. The spinning fiber. All yes, right. So we, as I said, we have ventured into knitting, I mean, into weaving and spinning. We and we can't find our words. Today, yeah, I know. Can. And so part of that is we are now stocking spinning fiber. So we've got a couple of different brands, different dyers, <laughs> but we've got these beautiful hand dyed braids. Now in the shop, different fibers, different, yep, different fiber contents. Um, this is Superwash BFL, Coriadale. this is Coriadale wool, Polworth and silk, Polworth's wool with silk in it. The Malabrigo Nube Bay is uh, merino, so lots of different things for you to try out different kinds of fibers, different samples. And like I said, if you are interested in learning more about how. Um, to spin these beautiful hand dyed braids, how what different techniques do with color um, that is on the schedule for the summer. Yeah. So I've got that spinning 102 class up for the summer. Is that it for the fibers? I think stuff? so. And then we've got oh. my. Oh, wait, do you want to talk about Dando? Yeah. Let's talk about Dando because this is also a yarn. <laughs> yeah. So for warm weather, for the another spring and warm summer. weather. Mm-hmm. And you know, guys, I will tell you, and let me just tell you a little bit about um, the way we handle uh, warm weather yarns in the shop. We don't get a huge amount of it because over the five years that we've been in business, our knitters tend to be more year round knitters. And so we, um, we carry some of this because there is some interest in it, but you're not going to see an overwhelming, we have cottons mm-hmm. and we bring in things like this for the warmer weather, but you're not going to see an overwhelming array of warm weather yarns in here. Um, that's just like I said, but with the ones we do, we carefully curate this collection mm-hmm. because we feel like we offer some of the best linens and linens and silks and um, like that Sabri with the alpaca and cotton, we feel like we do a good job of bringing in some real quality yarns for you. This one, um, this yarn we got in is the Silk Plus. No, this is 100%. Oh, that's the linen. linen. Okay, I'm sorry, because that's this. Yeah, yes. we didn't pull. So this is the 100% linen. No, it's actually Japanese linen from Dan Dow. And she also has her own a line of patterns to support the yarn. Yumiko we- Alexander mm-hmm. is the designer and owner's name. So this is the linen. It's a 100% linen. It's chainette ply construction. If you can yeah. see that on the camera. But we've got that in several colors. And we have this beautiful sample. This is crochet. Mm-hmm. And it's so neat. And the, the, the person who did it said it's actually very, very simple, too. You don't have to be like a crochet Mm-mm. expert um, to be able to work this. If you know some basics, how to chain stitch, how to single and double crochet, then you can make this is pattern called Prism by Yumiko Alexander. And it's this really fun mesh wrap. Very lightweight. Very lightweight. This yeah. would be fun. Like you could almost use it like a cover up on the beach or, you know, just to have a little something to throw on to go out to dinner you know, in the summertime. So it's a fabulous. We really, we have really loved her yarn. And then like that, like uh, Aaron said, that is the linen, but we also brought in her silk plus. Yes. And her silk plus is 76% silk. It's very similar to the 24% cotton. It's a little bit of cotton. And this is kind of a, these are kind of marly colors because the cotton doesn't take the dye. 
the mm -hmm. same way the silk. Does. Again, she supports the um, yarn with these beautiful patterns. We did the poncho in the shop. We'll show you that in just it's a sec. It's called River. River. We've had a lot of interest on this. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've sold most of our Silk Plus. We're getting ready. So to we have a restock room. coming. Yeah. So this is the poncho. Comes in a couple of different sizes. You'll see that. Yeah. She. So you'll see that it's got this really pretty. Um, there are a couple of ways you can wear it. Split. You can wear it kind of like a cowl. You can pull mm -hmm. it around your shoulders. If there's excess, you can kind of fold it up. Yeah. And pin it like we have it on the model, the mannequin in the mm -hmm. shop. What we do is we take the excess, yeah, that's like up here, and fold that over uh -huh. and close it up with like a shawl pin. Yep, Lots she even of has it to... done around her neck. Yeah, if like you a see cowl. This, like a mm -hmm. cowl, and she's pinned it. So mm -hmm. you can also do that as well. Lots and lots of options. Doesn't drape very well over my sweater. Well, but, no, <laughs> but um, anyway. but yeah, there's actually three mm -hmm. sizes. Mm -hmm. So very nice, very versatile, lots of ways to wear it. Mm -hmm. We um, had it paired in here with our uh, um, Mab Elements. Mab Elements. So Magnetic just, shawl pins. But yeah, just a nice way to wear it. So this yeah, is. So more of that is coming. You can see what we have and on we the get website. It quick, so. This comes fairly quick. So we'll have it restocked before the yarn crawl. Yeah. So, yeah. so we've been selling that. Yep. And then we've got some publications we'll share with you to talk about so as we've moved in to weaving and spinning we are now carrying hand woven magazine and spin-off magazine so these are in the shop we you know have the current issues uh which are march april spring the spring 2022 issues but these will be in the shop going forward. So if you're looking for those, we have those for you. And then also new to the shop is Nomadic Knits. This issue, so Nomadic Knits up until this point has been, um, each issue has been focused on a particular state or a couple of different states, a region of the country. They, I guess they've now decided to kind of go in a slightly different direction. So this one is called Head Over Heels and it is full of hat and sock patterns, which I think is kind of fun. Different patterns, different yarn weights, different sizes, different styles. So I think that's kind of a look fun. Look at the hat on the back. And the hat on, look at the yeah. hat on the back. So cute. So I think that's kind of a fun, a fun concept. So um, hats and socks, of course, are great summer knitting accessories as we move into warmer weather and you want to keep knitting or crocheting, but you don't want like, your you know lap to mm -hmm. be full of a big project. Hats and socks are great. I used to knit socks at the pool when my daughter was little. I knit three or four pairs of socks every summer because it was something easy for me to take with me. And this is a preview, guys. This yeah. is not available yet <coughs> for purchase, but it's coming. We just got it in the shop. It can't go out for um, on, until the 22nd. But okay. this is mm -hmm. um, the new issue of Making Magazine. We have a lot of people in here who really do like our making yeah. issues. And so this is coming. Number so, 13, yeah. Outside. outside. So we can't really show you too mm -hmm. much about what's in here. But Making Magazine has a mix of different um, crafts in it. Knitting, crochet, sewing, weaving, dyeing. There's always some recipes in there. That's yeah. weaving. Yeah. There's a whole lot of cool stuff in yeah. the making. So that we do have issues of that. And it will go on sale on April 22nd. Mm -hmm. We don't take pre-orders, but it will be up on our website and available for store for purchase yeah. on the 22nd. So in a couple of weeks. Yeah. We've actually started putting <coughs> our new summer classes up on the website. Don't waste time. They're all up now. Yep. We have one that was uh, that we still need to put up and oh. that is our weaving classes for oh, okay. our, our beginning weaving classes. Beginning yes. weaving. Um, we've got a couple coming. Um, actually, one more coming in August Our two that are the spring um, into May and June have, have already filled. filled. Um, July, our teacher needed to, we've got a new teacher. Kieser is coming on as a weaving teacher for us. You'll meet Kieser more down the road, but she is someone who's very proficient on the um, floor loom, especially. Mm -hmm. And um, so she's going to be coming in and uh, working with our, uh, our weaving customers and also uh, teaching our beginning weaving classes. She's going to start in August and we're working on that date right now. Um, but those classes, because we have a major wait list for those classes. 
Yes. Because so, we can only so just to help you kind of understand with the spinning and weaving classes, partially what we're limited by is just the number of seats we can have in the class. Mm -hmm. So Which for the mean? weaving classes, we can only have four um, seats in our beginning weaving classes because you just need space with the loom when you're learning how to warp the loom and everything. Um, and there will probably always be about four, four seats in, in those beginning classes just because of that mm -hmm. aspect. Um, the spinning classes have been limited to four seats. The one coming up in August, the next beginning spinning, I've actually upped it now. Now that I've taught a couple of classes and I feel pretty comfortable, I've upped it to six seats, which is nice. You know, but the <coughs> thing we're having with the weaving too, um, because we only have four looms, um, those looms are borrowed for the classes. And so you can't have two classes going on at the same, same time, time because the cu the customers have borrowed the right. four looms that the for the class and they're right. doing their assignment on those looms. So we first got excited. We go, oh, we can have concurrent classes. Well, we're going to need more looms to do that. So, or, you know, we'll you, get there. or we we'll would get have there. to have one session yeah. where you needed to already, people already who already own have. their own looms. Yeah. And then one session where yeah, we know. started to get excited about that and then realized, yeah. oh, we can't do that. Yet. But anyway, but so we're getting there. just about everything is up. <laughs> the one last class that is not up. Um, would be our beginning rigid heddle weaving class for mm -hmm. August. But we have lots of, we, we also have knitting classes and crochet classes and all kinds of things uh, up on the websites, all there. For the summer. For the yep. summer for you to check out. So all of our classes up through August right. are up there now for you to peruse and sign up for. We've got some really cool, some Tunisian crochet yeah, we have never class. done that one We've before. never had that one. So that's, there's a teaching crochet class up. Yeah. Um, there's all kinds of, there's a beginning lace. If you are interested mm -hmm. in learning how to knit a lace shawl, uh, Pam has a great class with with thicker yarn and bigger needles. So it's not scary. No, is um, that the Midlothian? Yeah. yeah. Learn Midlothian. how to knit um, a, a lace shawl. So we've yeah. got lots of great. So April, you know, March, summer's a good time to take a class. Come inside in the air conditioning yeah. and learn how to do something new. Exactly. Yeah. So, and the other thing, just a quick announcement, we are doing our yard sale again this year. Yes. This is always a popular event. We carry we carry on in the back of the parking lot. We'll have to see about that. Dunkin' Donuts will be opening. So we'll have to see. We may be over in the grass, we but may we'll be, see. Yeah, we have to shift uh, locations <laughs> slightly this year. We, um, we have a business getting ready to open in the back parking lot. So we'll have to see how that takes care of park or what that does with parking back there. But we are excited to have our yard sale again. We are having it on June the 4th, which is Saturday. It will be 8 to noon in the back parking lot. We never charge you to participate in this. Right. We only ask that you bring everything you need to sell your wares. Yeah. It's your stash only. Keep it to um, fiber and uh, knitting, crochet Train supplies, supplies, or spinning and weaving, weaving. Mm -hmm. supplies. That's all we ask. Don't bring your garage things from home that you want to get rid of. That's not the purpose of this. This is a stash busting yeah. yard sale. Um, we, we have a great time every, every year. time, every year people bring this out. So if you have stash that you're looking at going, I am never going to work uh -huh. with this, uh, you know, or if you're looking around feeling overwhelmed and like, I need to stash down, um, that's a great chance. So it's anything, yarn, needles, hooks, mm -hmm. uh, project bags. Um, we will tell you that books and magazines don't, don't really sell. sell very well. Um, so we'd encourage you to not, unless you want to just bring like some um, uh, thing to magazines and say free to a good home, just take mm -hmm. them. Um, so, but yeah, price your stuff to sell, bring your own tables, chairs, change, you know, yeah, to make everything change or everything or square. Or if you want to use, if you have like a, a Venmo. Venmo or something, have that all set. The only thing we ask is that we have to know just because of insurance purposes and we have to know just for space purposes, we need to know you're coming. Yes. We need to know how many to plan for, how big a space to mark off in the bat. So it is linked on our uh, newsletter. If you do not subscribe to our newsletter, you want to do that on our website. There is a place for you to sign up to receive that on a weekly basis. We do not inundate your inbox. We only send it out on Mondays so that you know everything coming up in the store. And there is, today's has not gone out yet. Yeah, it did at 11. Oh, it did. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. It. It'll, it'll continue to be, it'll yeah. continue to be links, but yeah, mm -hmm. so it'll be in the newsletter. There's just a link to a Google form. You just, it's not binding. It's just to help us 
no. estimate how many people are going to be there. Yeah. And if you change your mind, let me know yeah. that you've changed your mind. So mm -hmm. I know to take you off the list, right. but it is just a, a, an ongoing list of people I know are coming so that I can <coughs> plan on how much space to have. So that's yeah. all we ask. We don't charge you anything. No. That's all we ask. Yeah. That you let us know you're coming. And then, you know, advertise it to your friends, yeah. you know, your folks who your fiber friends mm -hmm. and, you know, other things, just put it out yeah. there on your social medias and things. So that As we know. start advertising on our yeah. social media, just take our posts and share. Yeah. That's what so that you'll know that it's coming. Okay, so um, let's just tell you a little bit, not too much, because we're going to pop on here with a special podcast edition yes. to um, to tell you everything having to do with yarn crawl. But it is coming up. You know, we're 32 days away. I, I don't want to hear that. I know. We're not ready yet. But no, we are. We, we are. We ready. are. We're ready. It'll we're be ready. fine. But it's just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but we, um, it's going to be too big for an Inspire Me. So we're going to be probably yes. doing a big production on here yeah. for the Yarn Crawl, telling you everything there is to know, everything to get you ready. We're excited because it's a spring crawl. Um, it always, it's just a great way to start, um, you know, planning for your fall, when, a fall, um, you know, uh, wardrobe and things you want to do. Also, the list, also lots of exclusives and specials and colorways and trunk shows. We have two trunk shows going on that week too. And we're also um, going to be doing demonstrations here for you. We've got so much planned. So yeah, we want you to make us a stop on this year's Yarn Cross, six shops, nine days. And um, so we'll be telling you a lot more about that. Yeah. This is your passport to everything Yarn Crawl. If you're not local, don't worry about it because you can still participate. Yes. All six all um, six shops will mm -hmm. have yep. um, stuff online yep. um, that you can purchase. So we will link the James River Yarn Crawl website underneath. So you can go ahead and check that mm -hmm. out. But if you just go to jamesriveryarncrawl.com, you can find out more information about that. And like Debbie said, we are going to do a special edition of the yeah. podcast where we're going to go through everything that you need to know for crawl. Yeah. You're going to want to come here first. <laughs> we got some really cool stuff, guys. You are not going to want to miss it. Go in, go Limited in quantities. So. Yeah, everything's everything when it's gone. It's gone. Quantities that we have yeah. found out, you know, our crowds have been bigger than anticipated every single year and we sell out of those exclusive things every year fairly early. So yeah. you want to um you want to keep that in mind. But yes, we will have for virtual, we will have you be able to participate. Mm -hmm. And you, even if you're virtual, can participate on our grand prize drawings as long as you submit receipts and email them to the James River Yarn Crawl that you have purchased something from yeah. all six shops. You're still eligible for the grand yeah. prize. So, so yes, it doesn't so matter where you're watching us from. And if you have to do a mixture, if you can't travel to right. the, you know, if you're here and you can't travel all over the to way the East Coast. To the, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm then we've got you covered. So mm -hmm. we'll tell you everything there is to know, but get ready. It's going to be great. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. We're so excited. All right. So we're going to tell you something. All right. It's the yes. time for the big news. Drum roll, drum roll, please. drum roll, drum roll. Of course, this may or may <laughs> not be news to you. You may already know there, what we're about to tell you. But, there's, but there is a lot But of there's news. always people who. So you know. we're moving, but not to fear. We're at the same shopping center. We're moving right behind the shop. And we're moving um, into a new place in the same shopping center that's going to double our size. Okay. So we're going to tell you a little bit about this space that um, we've got going on here. I just want to show for those of you who are joining <laughs> us from far away, um, you're going to have to make a trip to Richmond. That's all we're going to say. You just have to make a trip to Richmond. So um, this is our building. We are so excited. It's directly behind the shop mm -hmm. between us and Midlothian Turnpike. It formerly had the downstairs formerly housed the Isabella's restaurant. It's been a couple of restaurants in there. It's been a couple yeah. of restaurants. Most recently it was Isabella's, mm -hmm. um, which sadly did close a couple years ago. Right, um, but the right, start of the COVID. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Did not survive the pandemic. But that means that the entire downstairs is ours. is ours, and we will have some some of the office space upstairs too. Yeah. So the way it's going to work. Oh, and over here, oh, 
It's a deck. There's a deck. So what you can't see in the picture, it's off to the side. Yep. There is a big outdoor deck space, which will also be ours. It will also have a ramp for mobility access into, because you saw those steps. You might already be thinking, oh my gosh, there's like four steps up into this building. Yeah. There is a ramp on the deck. So there is access, mobility access that way into the shop. So the way you know how our shop is now, if you've been in here, you know we have our classroom space towards the back, a big table that we do our classes at this <coughs> table. We also have our social knitting here. We have a place up front that's got comfy chairs that you can sit and knit. All of that's getting taken out of the retail space when we're going to the new space. We'll have one room, one side of that building is dedicated to nothing but retail. And the other side of the downstairs will be our lounge area. Our, uh, we'll have our um, all of our equipment for our spinning and weaving over there. More floor equipment and than more we have floor now. Equipment, yes. And so you'll be able to come in and test drive all that. We're going to have, like I said, the big table in the center. We'll also have a 50-inch linear fireplace on the wall with soft seating around it. It's going to be a lounge area that, because we, I think, you know, one of the things that uh, is so important to me, and you've heard me say this over and over, the biggest piece, I always wanted the retail space, always wanted to sell yarn, but the biggest piece for me was always the community aspect of it. And I just wanted people to gather. I wanted people to gather and have a place to gather. And that is um, what this new space is going to afford us. It's going to have space downstairs to gather. It's going to have space outside to gather. Erin and I have joked that we're going to come in and open the shop in the morning. There's still going to be a deck full of people with waiting their, for us with their Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> from next door and their coffee that the Dunkin' Donuts is getting ready to fine. open. And we just love that. And I was telling some people at, um, at our event yesterday at the brewery, I said, you know, I just, I, I just want people to gather there. I just, I no rhyme or reason to it, you know, no set times as far as shop times to gather. I want it just to kind of be organic yeah. as far as the outside piece is concerned that you want to meet your friends or you want to come over during the day and sit inside. You know, you've got that whole side where you don't have to worry about you're in the middle of the retail shop. Right. So we've got also, and then we also will have a designated classroom where you can shut, where our teachers will be able to shut the doors, have class, which will open up uh, to us right now. We're limited. We can really only run classes when mm -hmm. the store is not open because otherwise there's a class going on in the middle of the retail yeah. space. And that's not ideal for anybody, shoppers or class participants. Yeah. But now we will be able to have classes whenever. So that'll open up our schedule availability for our teachers. And if the store is not open, then we have this lounge space and it is a classroom. We could run two classes at once. So yeah. this is really going to open up and allow us to have more classes mm -hmm. um, with different times, different days, times to kind of work with people's schedules better. So and we're if that wasn't just great enough. We have a compartment sink in the back that we're keeping that we're going to be able to do some dye classes back there for people who want to learn how to dye yarn. So we've got, I mean, it's going to be everything that you ever dreamed of with fiber. Yeah. We are so excited. Um, our timeline for this, um, as far as right now, everything has been submitted. We've gotten the bid back from the contractor. Um, the loan piece is in works. Um, they are getting ready to do the demo over there because it was a, a restaurant. So the kitchen has got to get torn out and some of water damage taken care of over there. So all that's happening probably before um, the end of this month, which is, you know, what we expect all the demo to have taken place. Our build out's going to take probably around 30 to 45 days. Of course, that's not consecutive because if we have some um, delays, delays, you know, that could put a we day. We all know between, what, the, what yeah. things are like right now. But they'll so. need 30 to 45 days in the space. Mm -hmm. And then so our, our, um, our target, target is to have it done by June thir July 30th. Our last day in this place will be Saturday, July 30th. We'll take a week to move everything over because all the inventory has to go over to the new space. And then we will do our grand opening August, August 6th. 6th. We've got some great things planned for grand opening. Yes, we're just keeping it's our crossed. fingers crossed. But we are so excited. This has kind of happened, happened very recently. Yes, so. <laughs> and, it, and it happened very fast. Yeah. Um, so it's it's been great, but it's been a little bit of a whirlwind yeah, it's here gosh, for the last few is, weeks. Yeah. But it's going to be fun. We'll keep you updated. Um, there will be a video series that will go yeah. up once the demo is done. 
we will take you into the space, show you kind of the clean blank space. Yeah. And then as um, different projects get done with the build, we will take you. So there'll be a whole series of videos mm -hmm. that you'll be able to watch here on the YouTube channel yeah. and follow along with us. So as I said, if you don't subscribe, now is the time to subscribe to the channel and hit that right. bell so that you don't miss when videos go live. Yeah. And when there are things that I can report to you and pictures I can share mm -hmm. with you, then of course we will do that also through the newsletter. I'll keep you posted there. I put a post out when we first got the building. I haven't posted anything since because I haven't been able to uh, sling a sledgehammer just yet. Debbie so, really I wants to do hit that, so something. I do. She wants to put a sledgehammer through a wall. So we're Over gonna there, see. I do. I want to be the first one to we're gonna, start that process. We're going to so. see. So hopefully yeah. we can get her in there for that. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'll wear the hard hat. Um, and the safety glasses. Safety, safety glasses, glasses yeah. are important. Yeah. So anyway, so that's about it for today. We did have quite a bit to talk to you about. You will see us popping on again before the month is out again to tell you about Yarn Crawl. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, to maybe we'll be able to get another um, one in during Yarn Crawl, another podcast with all the goodies that we have. In um, I think I we know. were talking about doing a podcast right that Monday the 8th was oh, our okay. next right scheduled before. one. So right before... Okay. We'll do a recap of Maryland Sheep and Wool, and we'll do a quick yeah that launch good. into yeah. Crawl. But there will be a special edition where we'll go over everything, everything for the with crawl. the crawl. That's right. But anyway, yeah. thank you for joining yeah. us today. Sorry it took us so long to get back. Um, we're hopefully that's not gonna <laughs> hopefully happen. everybody's gonna stay healthy now. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping. Yeah. But um, it's thanks for joining us. Yes. We're always so glad to bring you news from the store and the things that we're working on. Um, but we will see you on Inspire Me Fridays on Fridays at 10 o'clock on, on our Facebook, Facebook Live. Live. So, yeah, yeah. So take care. Enjoy this weather. I hear it's supposed to be a pretty week. It's so. supposed to be a good week. So, yeah, it'll be good. So, thanks again. All right. You take care. Bye, bye everybody. Bye.